Hello, how's it going? I've got a couple of shows coming up in April in London, the 13th and the 14th, I'm pretty sure it is. And they are the first shows I've had for a little while. And understandably, my performance synthesizer, Cosmo 2.0, is looking a little bit rough around the edges because of that. I wanna make a good go of these London shows with the plan of doing a handful more in the future as well. So I think it's a prime time to start fixing and updating Cosmo 2.0, the modular synthesizer. If you followed this channel, I did do a module a month project in 2020 and 2021. It kind of slowed down a little bit in 2022 because I only got about three modules jewels out then and it's kind of ground to a halt but I'm picking this whole project back up where it left I feel refreshed and ready to go I've already got a handful of module projects in the works to update and improve Cosmo as I go with hopefully quite a few of them done by the skin of my teeth before these two shows in April. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on something that I feel should have been sorted out a good few years ago. And that is the keyboard and sequencer setup. If you've ever seen any videos of Cosmo 2.0 being played, you will notice that the keyboard has got a Beatstep Pro and a Circlon Velcroed on top of it. And if you look really carefully, you'll find just a load of wires just dangling off the back with no real plan or purpose. Yeah, it's a right old mess. Whenever I've taken it to shows and stuff the wires have got snagged some of them are broken it's just not an ideal situation the whole keyboard and velcro thing was always a halfway measure with a plan of making a base case for the synthesizer to sit on top that would house everything that is needed for all of the different types of sequencing all of the power for all of the synthesizer and bits like that so today we're going to tackle the base case in the only way i know which is pure bodgery anyway i've got hold of some 18 millimeter thick ply and yeah let's get let's get building so off we go it looks like at the start He's laying out all the parts to see where it's all going to go. Are those side cheeks? Yeah, Ron, it looks like he's laying out these side cheeks to make a 45 degree point between the 90 degrees of the modular synthesizer and the uh, kind of laid down flat keyboard. It looks like there's no rulers in sight. Oh my God, is he doing this all by eye? Yes, Tony, your eyes are not deceiving you. This could all turn out very wonky indeed, but it's okay because it looks like he's using the Circlon as a ruler and the Beatstep Pro as a set square so at least we know it's gonna be square to those at least Ron I think we're watching a carpentry renegade or a hack I cannot figure it out but at least he's using a nice coat of thick black paint to cover up all of those mistakes because yeah we he would have been in a sticky situation if that was varnished that's exactly right Tony it looks like we're looking at a GCSE woodwork project he must know something that we don't know because it is ringing some definite alarm bells but I guess with that paint it looks quite nice you are right there Ron, it does look quite nice. He seems to have recovered that quite gracefully. And as you can see, all of the bits are actually fitting quite well. Uh, I think he's going to be using these power supplies and putting them in the back. Those are for the modular synthesizer. Is that correct, Tony? That's exactly right, Ron. He's going to be using these metal strapping bits with some screws to kind of bolt them in place. Let's hope he said that's going to go nowhere because hopefully then it won't go anywhere. Right now, there's a hole just here. This has got the uh, different power supplies hanging out. This is just um, a temporary fix for now. I've just got to see if it's going to fit. I think I've done the sizes right. That looks all right. The thing is before, I had a problem with um, sometimes my, my jacket or whatever I was wearing would hit a key and it would accidentally play whilst it was fiddling. But I think because it's slightly closer now and it's slightly lower to the synth, that might probably might go. And then we'll get a stop. Oh jeez. So that's how much I got done last week and I decided to take it to Synth East, which was a Synth Expo in Norwich on that weekend to see how it was going to work out. I didn't get as much done on this as I was hoping before trekking off to Synth East, but what are you going to do? Uh, we've got ourselves an accidental cup holder. This is where the panel for the MIDI is going, but right now we can put our coffee in there. Uh, it's got a random keyboard because uh, I'm probably going to use this keyboard because it's not that bad, but build around it because it literally looks like it's plonked on there. I, I treated myself to a black Beatstep Pro but it didn't turn up in time, so we got the uh, white one on there, and also around the side, well, we've still got uh, we've still got all of the uh, wires sticking out because we haven't got the panel on here. So we've we've got another cup holder. So yeah. 
Looks like we're off to the races, Ron. But where? I think you said something about the expo in Norwich, Sim Feast. Oh, I haven't put a handle on it yet. How do I carry it? Well, he didn't really think that through, but there's no time. He's got to get over to Sim Feast, oh which God. is in Norwich, a Sim Expo. And as you can see, it's set out in a nice church building. That's right, Ron. It looks like everybody else had a bit of common sense and bought their small, compact synthesizers. As you can see, Cosmo 2.0 over there is a bit big, but this is Somer Electronic with all of their latest products. And then there's Bifaco Synthesizer, Bastool Synthesizer. Oh, but it's all a synth. You're getting a bit excited there, Tony. This is our Apollo View. There's the oscillator and the rabbit hole, which is a very involved valve-based distortion module. I was quite a fan of the uh, shop display for MIDI Cake to uh, promote their uh, brand new MIDI sequencer. Oh, and Tony, don't forget about the Poly Cinematic. It's a polyphonic synth as a synth module. Breaking news! Because of health and safety, Sam was not allowed to put the top case on top of Cosmo. Slam dunk! Well, don't forget about Racket either. They make the Atari Punk console kits that are pretty cheap. Check them out. Apart from having to lug around that massive block of wood that I just built, it was a really fun day. There was also something called a synth shootout where six of us had our names in a hat. There was Steve Davis, Lula York, Andrew Brooks, Robin Morton, Gaz Williams, and me, all with our names in a hat. They got picked out as a pair and we had to jam with who we got chose with. It began with Andrew Brooks and Robin Moulton. Then Steve Davis and Lula York. And then me and Gaz Williams, it was a lot of fun. There's a few videos covering this day. The links are below in the description. Anyway, let's get back to this base case. Oh my God. Oh dear. Oh, I've built this too big. <laughs> it's just huge. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have uh, mixed up the, uh, the plywood sizes because um, 18 millimeters around the whole thing with the power supplies that are inside it, as well as everything else makes quite a bulky item. But this is, it's not gonna get any heavier than this, which is good. Okay, we're on a, we're on a desk now, it's a bit more stable. So just after getting back from Synth Feast with this thing, uh, let's have a look at what we think and what we're gonna do next with this thing, because it's not, it's not done. It needs a lot of work. One of the biggest oversights was the fact that these power cables, they were coming out this side, oh, like this one, but they wouldn't reach the top, but because of that liability issue of it falling over, it didn't really matter because it's sat over here anyway. So problems averted. So what we're gonna do now is get the top off and just start finishing it, I guess. Ron, who gave him back those hands? tools. He should have been relegated in the last season for that ludicrous display. That's right, Tony, but it looks like he might have learned from his lesson because he is now cutting some holes and this aluminium panel is 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters for the XLR sockets, for the power, for the modular synthesizers above, as well as a kettle lead hole, also known as an IC cable in some strange countries. Ron, you can also tell a player to place by intuition, by the lack of rulers or measuring devices, but at least you can cover up those wonky holes with spray paint, right? What is he doing? It looks like he's removing the back panel of the keyboard. Tony, I am as bewildered as you right here. It looks like he's removing all the keys. What could he be possibly planning right here? Ron, I'm as bewildered by you, but it looks like he's spraying the black keys white and the white keys possibly black. It looks like he's got the Dremel out. He's gonna be cutting down the keyboard case. Well, Tony, you know when you're watching a player that's comfortably playing on the edge of his trousers, but this could go one of two ways. It could go awfully wrong, or we could be pleasantly surprised. Well, Ron, you know that we are watching a player who is comfortable with thick loops of black paint. We know that the only focus he has is the finishing line. Out comes the silver sharpie. This looks like the MIDI panel. This has got both of the outputs to the modular synthesizers as well as an input. Well, he's only human after all. It has been a long time since his coloring classes at school. This is a pinnacle point. He's putting the parts into the panels. Hopefully the holes line up. Ron, I'm as nervous as you about this. It looks like he's also got a problem with the spray paint can. He might have ran out. Hopefully he can get a refill in time. Tony, are you seeing what I'm seeing? It looks like, oh, the black bean 
Step Pro has finally turned up. Oh my god, isn't that beautiful? Ron, I've heard in a previous game interview that he's been planning this upgrade for quite a while, but it doesn't seem to make sense because what's the point? It's just a different color, but it seems like he's just done this at the pinnacle moment, and this might give him the edge. Well, you and me both know that he's gonna have to pull out some tricks out the bag to make this fit nicely. Oh, he's taking the back off. What could he be possibly planning? Oh, is it another bodge? I think it might be. It looks like he's cutting the cables from the back and he's looking where they go so he can solder the rest of the cables onto the back of it so the cables can hang out the back of the Beatstep Pro and go into the actual case. Ron, uh, this is an interesting tactic. I haven't seen this before. Hopefully it works in his favor, but it could go very... Oh my God, has he got out the Dremel? Is he cutting up a brand new Beatstep Pro back plate? That is, this man knows no bounds. I'm as bewildered as you, Tony, but oh, and he hasn't broken it yet. That's okay. It looks like he's measuring up for something. And oh, can you see his breath? It must be freezing in there. Tony, you can definitely tell that a player is committed to the game when they'd rather spend the money on synthesizers than heating. Anyway, he's got the computer data design coming out, which is on shape, so he can 3D print some mounts to mount the Beatstep Pro onto the front of it instead of using Velcro, which is so last year. Well, Ron, you're not wrong there, but at least you can tell the lulz bot Taz Workhorse still works at around 2 degrees Celsius, which is good to know for the future. It looks like he's now putting the mounts on. It looks like they fit quite well. And Tony, it looks like the early game foundations that he laid down are really paying off. As you can see, the keyboard is starting to come back together. We got the black keys as white keys and the white keys as black keys. Who would have thought it, hey? I know, Ron, but the game isn't over yet. He's got to put some cladding on and finish all of the electrical work. These are the switches that are going to go between the power supplies and the outputs to the modulars above. Uh, as you can see, he's using a heat shrink and some very uh, heavy-duty switches for the, for this uh, uh, practice. Ron, are you okay? Is everything all right? Tony, thanks for asking. Everything's all right. I just had a little moment. Everything, it's been a long week, and I've been having some troubles at home lately, but that soldering really took me back. Oh, oh, it really... Oh, but good playing on the heat shrink right there using the hot glue gun. That is looking pretty good. Ron, go and sit in the back, take a chill, and I'll carry it on from here. It looks like he's putting all of the panels that he's been laying out at the start of the game and putting them in place. Hopefully, it's all gonna work still. Tony, are you okay, mate? Are you okay? Yeah, man, I gotta go tell my wife I love her. I gotta go, I just gotta go. Uh, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We just had a technical hiccup, but it looks like he's nearly done. The game is definitely playing in his favor, but there is still all to play for because we don't know whether it's gonna fit just nicely and play quite well. So we're gonna have to figure this out. The game may never finish. The game is life. Tony, I am so glad to be back. What have I missed? Oh, it looks like he's plugging in the power. Have I missed the fact that he's managed to slam dunk and finish this thing? Oh my God, it looks better than I was expecting. Whoa, look at those lights. It looks like this player was lucky this time. As you know, this player sometimes gets it right and sometimes gets it very wrong. But this one, it looks like it might be a success. And, and the Furby's happy. We can't, what, what else do you want? Uh, Tony, it looks absolutely beautiful. Oh my God. Oh, I was not expecting to be so emotional today. That's, that's beautiful. All in all, I'm pretty pleased with how this thing is turning out. I've managed to fit everything inside of it. It's now in a nice big organized box instead of random jangling wires everywhere and power supplies I have to plop together all the time. It definitely reduces the setup time quite considerably. I haven't yet built the front of the case, but I've kept the offcuts from what I've chopped it off. Plan is to build a cocoon on the front that kind of bolts on and off just to speed it up, which is inevitably going to make it a little bit heavier yet again, but yeah, what are you going to do? So I did a Look Mum No live stream over on Patreon last night just to test it out and it's working pretty well. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's a couple of settings on this Beatstep Pro I need to adjust because it's acting a little bit differently to the other one, but that's fine. But all in all, the positioning of the keyboard to the modular is way better. The keys before were really light. These are a little bit heavier, so it doesn't accidentally play if you lean over, which isn't happening because you've got the angle now anyway. And the height to Furby ratio, it's about 10 centimeters taller than it used to be, but that's not a problem because that's easy to get to. I've got an extension cabinet on the top as well. That's a little bit of a stretch, but not the end of the world. Just shut up, you silly Furby. I wish I've got to put an off switch on the Furby. It just doesn't shut up. So I've spoken about my sequencing setup quite a lot in a few videos. There's a link below onto one that's talking about using the Beatstep Pro and such. But this layout has stuck for a couple of years, hence why I'm making it into a permanent setup. Around the back is a Kenton MIDI merger. What the MIDI merger does is it merges the MIDI signal from the Circlon, from the Beatstep Pro, from an external input if we want to plug it into something else to be able to sequence it, and also from the MIDI player, which is down here, which pretty much simply plays MIDI sequences. This is the Cymatic Audio Live Player LP16, and if I'm honest, I'm not having a very good time with it. I think the software to format the files that go onto it is no longer supported or anything. It's giving me a load of jip, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna take it out because I don't wanna use it anymore. Oh, oh, you're coming with me. You're getting out of it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So this is coming with me, we're not using that anymore. And I'm gonna go back to my old SD card MIDI sequencer. This is really cool. I don't know why I stopped using these in the first place. It's the Orgomatic MIDI Lector. It, it's made for, um, funnily enough, it's made for organs, so you can load MIDI files for the organs to play. It's even got a sync input, which is actually used for a hurdy-gurdy style sequencer to be able to make it feel like you're rolling along a piece of tape with the sequences on. But it's actually a really soft solid MIDI sequencer player. Uh, I think I need to just buy a backup one because I remember once it didn't work for no reason. So if I've got a backup, then at least we're safe. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and rebuild this into this part here because it's just a lot simpler to use. So the keyboard's output is wired into the Circlon's input, which means we could play any of the synth voices above and also any other synth voices via the MIDI output of this thing right here. So that's all the synth voices that it's plugged into at the minute. But you can get this to sequence a bunch more out of the synth because it's still got MIDI outputs coming out of this panel right here. The Beatstep Pro is acting as the drum sequencer. That's because this is much more immediate and performative than the Circlon when it comes to making drums. You can use the Circlon to program drums, but for me, I just, it's, I like this more. The Beatstep Pro also maintains all of its original functionality so you can plug it into other things as well. But it's also wired into the Circlon, so channel one on the Beatstep Pro actually transposes everything. <laughs> Like this. This all put together gives you a variation of sequencing kind of ways to keep it all moving and interesting and stuff for an hour's performance or whatnot because you've got complicated, difficult to live sequence things coming from this one and then you've got live sequenced ones doing this, that and the other coming from here. And then you can also just straight up. Just play your heart out, baby. Don't you wanna play your heart out? Oh yeah, let's play your heart out. Oh Jesus, that's horrid. That's awful. You can just play the drum beat. Baby, play your heart out. Just play your heart out, baby. Don't be shy. <laughs> Oh my God, what have I done? So there we go, I'm pretty pleased with what I've bashed out. This is the first bit of getting this Cosmo 2.0 ready for those shows and for the future and whatnot. I've got a number of PCB module projects that will be coming out very soon, which will be for improving this, but they'll also be available to build yourself. You can watch back the Look Mum No live stream on Patreon as well as download a bunch of songs and stuff, see a bunch of vlogs, see all the projects that I'm working on at the minute, and then also see upcoming live streams over there. 
So if you want to support this stuff and also check out all of that stuff, then go and check over on Patreon. The link is below. You'll also be pleased to know the next video is on the organ over at this museum's not obsolete. Anyway, I'm looking at no computer. This is Cosmo 2.0. Don't be scared to try it. Maybe don't, maybe build this lighter if you build it. Build it a little bit lighter.